At the beginning of 2014, I bought my van. And by the end of 2015, I purchased my Webasto. It was one of the best things I ever bought for my van. I had been researching for a while about the Webastos and the, the S-Bars, which is something similar. It's funny because they're right next door to, from each other uh, where they're made. And, uh, and I had been researching for a while. I was trying to figure out which one I was going to buy, either the S-Bar or the Webasto. And then I settled on the Webasto because it seemed to have better reviews than the S-Bar. I went on Wabasto's website, and their website is pretty confusing. At the time, I, I looked, and I saw that they had what I wanted, but it was in uh, for a diesel vehicle. And I almost installed a diesel tank underneath this, my van just to run that Wabasto. And then a friend of mine, Duncan, he's got a channel, Expediting Travels, he mentioned, no, they also make a diesel a gas unit. And sure enough, they did make a... A gas unit. I looked through their um, dealer finder on their website and I was able to find a dealer in upstate New York and I used them. I actually I bought the unit through them and the reason I didn't do it myself is because the, the fuel tank had to be dropped and you had to drill into the fuel tank and I, I just didn't feel comfortable. First of all I didn't have I wouldn't have the tools to do all that stuff especially if the fuel tank still has fuel then look it's it's fuel it's it's gas it's volatile it's a volatile fuel i didn't want to mess with that stuff one little spark and there goes the rolling your chip bye anyway i didn't drill <laughs> i didn't do any of that stuff i let them do that so i purchased the, the webasto through them they installed it for me. The only thing they didn't do, and I was very clear with them before I even went there, I told them, you can install it, you can do all that stuff, but the wiring, all the electrical wire, I'll do it myself. Because I had to run the wire through these cabinets over here, coming this way, and I didn't want them to... to, to it was a mess. I had to take this thing out, this cabinet had to come out. I actually had to come out, had to come out a couple times because uh, the first time I forgot one of the wires. I put all the shelves back. Then I realized that I have one more to go. The heater is on and it's hot. And we gotta let it purge for about a half hour or so. All my wiring worked. It's been a few years. It's raining fantastic. It still works good. If I had to buy another Webasto, I would definitely do so. I would not hesitate. It's always good to have multiple heating sources so in the future if i build a bigger vehicle and i decide to put a wood stove or or something similar i would probably most likely pretty sure 99 percent sure as long as i had the money to do so i would install another webasto because it uh, basically you don't have to do anything as long as you have gas in your vehicle you are good. The thing uses about one gallon for about at 22, 24 hours. I guess it depends how cold it is outside, but uh, let, let's say about a gallon every 24 hours. So it's, it's pretty good. And this is what makes it turned on. And then as long as you have it in the right place, uh, this one is analog, it's not digital. It'll stay at that temperature uh, all night long. So because this is analog, it's not digital, I just guess. And since I've, I've had it for a while, I know exactly more or less where to, to set it for, for the temperature that I want. And you can be, uh, let's say you, you want to you wanna be at 70 degrees all night. You set it there and once it reaches the 70 degrees, it'll stay there all night long. So you don't have to keep turning it off and turning it back on. It's going to do it for you. And as long as you have gas in the vehicle you're going to be good for quite a while. So if you go camping somewhere and you want to be there 14 days or 30 days, if you have a, bu uh, if you have a big uh, fuel tank, you're going to be able to stay there almost a whole month uh, using the Webasto all day long for, for, for quite a, a few days, almost, almost a whole month. Now that depends on the size of your fuel tank. The Webasto is not going to remove 
all the gas from your tank. The uh, line, the fuel line, only goes down to a certain depth. So you're going to have quite a bit of fuel left uh, for you to drive off and, and get some more gas. So that's just a safety feature that the Webesto has. You're not going to run out of gas. The thing will stop running once it uh, can't suck any more gas, obviously. And then you know that it's time to go get more fuel. Um, if you had the line going all the way to the bottom, you would use up all your gas and then you wouldn't be able to drive back to a gas station and get more gas. So you'd be stuck there. So I love it that it has that feature. It's just a common sense feature. I have it right over here underneath this cabinet. And I have a couple containers on top of that. The containers come out very easily in less than a minute. I get all the containers out. Actually, it's just a few seconds, really. The gas unit doesn't really have much maintenance aside from turning the unit on about once a month and that's what i do for about 10 15 minutes i know that the diesel unit has a little bit more maintenance you have to clean the fuel filter or replace the fuel filter every once in a while i don't have one so i'm not I'm not exactly certain the combustion is done inside the unit none of the combustion gets in my van the unit has two pipes going underneath the van one of those pipes is the exhaust from the combustion and the other pipe last summer or the summer before when i was here in florida i installed an exhaust muffler and an intake muffler the unit can be quite loud just begins to whistle especially when it's starting up the exhaust and the intake is on the driver's side so i like to park with that side next to an island nobody else parking next to me if i park somewhere and somebody else can park next to me then there's always the possibility that in the middle of the night someone comes and parks and then they might notice the noise a little bit. Maybe, probably not. But just in case, I like to park either with the driver's side next to an island where nobody else is gonna park or next to a field. Or if I know that there's a vehicle, a truck or a van, like I've done recently, that uh, always parks there all night long. I was staying at this hotel for a few weeks while I was doing this, this job. And I just, it was a beautiful place. It was very nice. And there was tons of trucks and vans that parked there every night. So I just went there every single night, never had a problem. And I knew that these vans, once they were there, they wouldn't leave until the next day. I've had the unit since 2015, 2016. I forget exactly when, uh, probably 2015, because in 2016, I went around the country and I already had the unit. Nobody's ever knocked on my van and said, hey, what's what's going on there you got this thing running no, nobody said anything so the unit has been running fantastically I would highly recommend getting a Webasto even the place that installed the unit I I would still recommend uh, them for an installation with the warning that you have to be careful because um, when I had my 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 Webasto installed a couple things they didn't seal the bottom properly i had to do that you probably can see my insulation and my floor any water that splashes underneath i am sure are going to get water in there i saw that before i left but what are you going to do so i just i guess that's how they do it or they're not used to doing vans or whatever four or six bolts that go through the bottom plate of the unit and go through the floor were kind of loose I went to the store, I went to Lowe's or whatever, Home Depot. I have four more nuts to go, but I need a long socket. I need a 10 millimeter to 3 8 long socket, and then I'll be done. You know, when it comes to things like this, I always know that unless you do it yourself, it's not going to get done right. I got a lock washer and a lock nut. I tightened those pretty good and then I sealed everything at the bottom and I never had any leaks. Looks like the way they connected the unit and did all that stuff, they did it right because it's still working. If you are watching this and you want to know where I had the unit installed, just send me an email. It's below the video. Always getting interrupted. High production here. Uh, the unit doesn't use a lot of power, but it uses enough power that if I don't have a lot of sun in the winter, even with the extra battery power that I have, uh, sooner or later I'm going to run out of energy to run that thing. So that's the only issue in the winter, in the winter time. 
Uh, I do have another way to, to charge my batteries, but it's still not enough. So the good thing is that I'm not staying where it's cold in the winter. So I, I use the unit uh, a little bit in the winter while it's cold, but, but not throughout the whole winter. The bad news is that if, if I had to work the whole winter, then I would have to buy something like a portable generator, maybe like the Yamaha, or the Honda, little small generators. And I would have to have that to charge up my batteries to be able to run the unit every day. So, but I'm not I'm not using it every day anymore because I'm not I'm in Florida. I'm not in um, I'm not up up north. So I'm I'm okay. So once in a while it gets a little bit cold, I can use it. I have enough power. But yes, definitely I would recommend it. It's like having your own home heating system because if you ever had a house. You just turn your thermostat and you forget about it. I turn my thermostat and I forget about it. Praise the Lord in song, for he has done excellent things. Let this be known throughout the earth. Cry aloud and shout for joy, O inhabitants of Zion. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Isaiah 12, 5, 6.